I'm here for a little while on the planet Earth, just a very little time, a few years. And I get to see, I don't get to see much. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. I only get to see the little tiny bit that's in front of me in a given moment, and I miss everything else. You understand that? Those of you who think you know something, you don't know anything. Here's a book. It's just the most brilliant book. Read one word. Give me the book back. Do you know the book? Here's a moment in life. There are 700 billion quillion going on at the same time. You saw one, you know what's going on? No, you don't know what's going on. You don't have the slightest idea what's going on. You only know what you picked up. I told you, statistically, what you picked up is statistically insignificant. In fact, it rounds to zero. Point oh, 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 oh. Am I right or wrong? You see it? So therefore, what you picked up can't be anything. It's nothing. It's zero. But you think it's everything. And to you, it is everything because it's the only thing you picked up. <laughs> Your universal set is like nothing. It's just, God, I'm trying to talk to you intelligently. So the right way to come into the moment is to sit here and realize I'm a conscious being. That's a blessing. How it came from, I don't know, but I'm here. I know I'm here and I'm conscious. And there's this moment unfolding in front of me. I am well aware that there are 700 billion zillion going on everywhere that I'm not experiencing, but I can't do anything about that. Let me at least experience the one I'm experiencing. Wow, it's kind of neat. Let me at least experience what I'm experiencing. It's like a gift. This is the gift that's being given to you. There's another gift being given to everybody else. There's seven billion people on the planet Earth. Every single one of them experience something different every single moment. That's what they're experiencing. That's the gift that's being given to them. And so you actually come into the moment, I'm afraid to say it, with a sense of honor, with a sense of respect, with a sense of gratitude. You sit there and say to the moment, wow, thank you. This is the one I got to experience. It has nothing to do with what I want, what I don't want, or what should be, or what shouldn't be. It has to do with my humility of realizing I'm not the creator of the universe. I'm the experiencer of this moment. That's what I am. There are forces that are creating the universe. You do know that. You want to call them science? I love it. You want to call it God? I love it. It makes no difference. Just call it not me. That's the nicest name for the creator of the universe. Not me. Because you know it's not you, don't you? <laughs> okay? You're just kind of sitting here picking up the moment that's in front of you. Then honor and respect that experience. This is all, I told you, spirituality and life, same thing. This is the highest way to live your life. And I'm telling you, you'll end up being the most successful at everything you do. More successful you'll be the other way. If you sit there and fight with the moment that you're having, you'll be less successful than if you honor and respect the moment as it is unfolding and see what it is you can do with it. You start with acceptance. You start by, uh, here, some of you play golf. Not many probably out here, but I'll use that example anyways, all right? You play golf, you hit a ball. It doesn't go where you want it to go. Your first drive is off into the woods a little bit, rough. And that's not what you want. You wanted it to be 300, 480 feet down the fairway right in the middle. And if it had gone to 480 feet, you would have used a, you know, six iron, seven iron to chip up to the green, hit up to the green. But now you're over here in the rough or on the edge of the rough and you're way far away. Well, I think you should use the seven or the wedge anyways, because that's what you wanted to use. And that's how you wanted it to be. Would that be good? That'd be the best you can be. Because if you had hit it the best you could get, then this is what you could hit. Therefore, come on, man, make it be what you want. You're not going to do very well, are you? You start by honoring and accepting that this is where your ball is lying but I don't like it. Too bad. <laughs> if you don't like it, you're going to be uptight. You're not going to hit it well. Or you're going to try and hit it like you hit a wedge. I've been telling you, it has nothing to do with whether you like it or don't like it, does it? It has to do with honoring and respecting the reality of where things are. And so you start by accepting, oh, here's the ball. That's neat. I wonder how good I can do when it's on the edge of the rough. Not, I wish it wasn't here. It's not going to do you any good to do that. You begin by honoring, respecting, accepting, and even enjoying the fact that you get to try and see how good you can get hitting the ball out of the edge of the rough. And if you do that, you will enjoy your round of golf. And I did think that was the purpose of it. It's supposed to be an entertaining sport. It is not supposed to give you ulcers. Your doctor told you to go play some golf because you have ulcers. They did not want you to get ulcers because you're playing golf. I'm telling you the same thing about life. It's exactly the same. 
God, I could just give you example after example after example. And some of it looks so absurd, but until you're doing it, let's say you're playing tennis. You're trying to learn to play tennis. You tell me, when you play tennis, you're playing tough, you're playing it you know, up at the high level. You're there, you're waiting for the ball to come back. I want your mind to decide where the ball's going to come back. God, this is my sweet spot. If he hits it over here, I'll say, then go over there and go over there. Quick, run over there the minute the ball comes back. How are you going to play? That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to watch the ball come off the person's racket and move in harmony with where the ball is going to do your best to become one with their racket, with the ball, with them, with their body language. And you will do much better than trying to guess where that person is going to hit the ball and then going over there, they should have, and then getting mad at them because they didn't. They're not playing fair. I'm telling you, as absurd as that sounds, that's what you're doing with life. You are making up how you want it to be, assuming it's going to be that way, and playing accordingly, and then getting mad when it's not that way. A wise being doesn't do that. A wise being comes into the moment with a sense of humility. I don't know anything. I've, I've hardly experienced anything. <laughs> how can I just take the little bit I experienced, sum it together, and say, now I know what's supposed to happen next? Whoa. That's absurd. And so you come into the moment, but then people think, but wait a minute, I don't understand. How will I interact with the moment? If I'm not using my mind to make up what it's supposed to be based on what I want, how will I know what to do? That's what they say to me. I won't know what to do. I won't. How about listening to what's happening? In sports, we call it coming into the zone, being present completely. Your mind's out of it altogether. You're present in the moment, just like you were when the tennis ball got hit, just like you are sitting there when the golf ball's on the side of the rough. You come in harmony with the reality that is in front of you, and then you see with clarity, not emotion, not disappointment, not anything, just here I am, here it is, what is my best interaction? Not what do I want. It's never what do I want. That's the hardest thing for me to break through with you people. You are not supposed to be getting what you want. Let me say it again. You are not supposed to be getting what you want. You are just making up what you want. You're supposed to be getting the reality of where your consciousness is with the reality of the moment that's unfolding in front of you. And guess what? That's what you're going to be getting. I don't care what you want or not. You're going to be getting the reality of all the forces that cause the moment to be there. That's what's going to happen. So you're either in harmony with it or you're in harmony with your own mind. And that's the difference. And that's the essence of spirituality. Spirituality doesn't sit there and say, renounce the world, don't deal with it, go live in a cave somewhere. No. Spirituality says, don't live in what your mind is making up because it takes you out of harmony with reality. And you will always do better in every single thing you do. You'll be a better parent, you'll be a better husband or wife, you'll be better in business, you'll be better at sports, you'll be better at every single thing you do if what you interact with consciously is the reality that's unfolding in front of you instead of interacting with what your mind has made up, what it wants and what it doesn't want, and then trying to superimpose that on top of the reality that's unfolding in front of you. That is the entire path. See, it's not Eastern or Western. It's not weird. It's not Christian or Jewish or Hindu. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's reality. Who is willing to come in harmony with reality?